Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Slim Down and Shape Up. My name is Ben Greenfield, and I'm the Get Fit Guy. I recently published a short article called, Is Your Protein Bar Healthy?, in which I warned about unhealthy ingredients found in many popular protein bars. These ingredients included high fructose corn syrup, fractionated palm kernel oil, canola oil, hydrogenated fats, artificial sweeteners like sucralose and acesulfami potassium, wheat, lots of rice or other refined sugars like cane syrup, and sugar alcohols like maltitol, xylitol, sorbitol, lactitol, mannitol, and erythritol. I'll link to that article in the show notes if you want to geek out on some of those ingredients a little bit more. And then later on, in a follow-up episode entitled, Is Your Protein Bar Healthy? Part 2, I expounded on why you need to moderate the amount of sugar alcohols in your diet, even if they're from healthy sources like protein bars. Well, since then, I've been receiving lots of questions from Get Fit Guy fans who are eager to know which protein bars that I personally use or recommend. So, in today's episode, you're going to learn which protein bars are the healthiest, how to choose the right protein bar for your needs, and get recommendations for some of the better protein bars out there. As you learned in part one of this series, and again, I'll link to that, it's important to choose a protein bar that doesn't have high amounts of additives, preservatives, and extra ingredients. So beginning with two options that you may not traditionally think of as protein bars, but that certainly fit that same nutritional bill, here are my top recommendations. Number one, pemmican. Now, it may take you by surprise to see this relatively uncommon food source listed as a protein bar, but with its extremely high levels of appetite-satiating healthy fats mixed with high-quality amino acids, I just couldn't write about protein bars without including pemmican, which is actually a bit more like a tube than a bar, but still extremely portable and a very good option as a pre- or post-workout snack. Now, for those of you who aren't aware what exactly pemmican is, It's basically a concentrated mixture of fat and protein. It was invented by the Native Americans and was later adopted by European settlers as a high-energy food source. The meat from pemmican is usually derived from cattle, bison, moose, elk, or deer, and it's crushed to a powder, then mixed with an equal amount of rendered fat, usually from beef tallow. It also contains, or can contain, dried fruits like cherry or blueberry, plus honey or sea salt. Some of those things are often added simply to add natural preservatives or flavorings. Now, pemmican tastes very much like tender, tender beef jerky, and it will literally keep you full for hours on end. Like any animal product, you should try to get a grass-fed, organic version of pemmican without malted corn or barley. I personally eat the pemmican from a company called U.S. Wellness Meats, and you can simply order it online. Number two, and falling into the same category as pemmican possibly, is beef jerky. Now, jerky is very similar in terms of it being an animal source and being high in bioavailable protein, but it lacks the rendered fat that pemmican has. And because of the lower fat content, beef jerky may not keep you full for quite as long, but it can be easier to digest for some and is actually lower in calories. Now, beef jerky is easy to make at home, and I will link to a recipe that will allow you to make it at home over at getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com. But if you're short on time and you need a more convenient option, you could buy beef jerky packaged. The key is to look for beef jerky with no additives, preservatives, MSG, or red dye, and get it preferably from a grass-fed beef source that's antibiotic and hormone-free. Typically, the curing for a natural beef jerky is done in a salt brine with low heat rather than a high heat environment with added nitrates and additives. One brand of beef jerky that I've been eating and liking quite a bit lately is called Nick's Sticks. Number three. Okay, now we get to actual protein bars. Grass-fed whey protein bars. Now, as you learn in part one of this series, it's important that your protein bar be low in sugar and additives. A high-quality protein source is also key, and for this reason, I avoid protein bars that rely on highly processed soy or wheat proteins, as well as whey protein from commercial dairy sources. And I instead choose grass-fed whey protein, which has an amino acid profile that is very favorable for doing things like optimizing muscle repair and recovery. The protein bar that I personally use has the following all-organic ingredients with no refined sugars. Here we go. 
whey protein blend, which is basically grass-fed, cold-processed whey protein concentrate mixed with grass-fed, microfiltered, cold-processed whey protein isolate, organic agave, organic peanut butter, organic inulin, organic brown rice protein, glycerin, organic vanilla powder, and citrus sweet, which is basically a very low glycemic index sweetener derived from natural flavorings and citrus extract. And the fact that it's low glycemic means that it's a little less likely to spike your blood sugars. The actual chocolate coating on the outside of the bar is organic dark chocolate. So while I would certainly classify such a bar as less healthy and containing more fillers than something like pemmican or jerky, it tastes more like the traditional protein bars that you may be accustomed to, but is the least damaging of your options. That particular brand whose ingredients I just read off is called the Hammer Nutrition Recovery Bar. Now, number four would be vegan protein bars. And if you're vegetarian or vegan, then beef jerky, pemmican, and whey are not options for you. And in this case, you'll need to look for a protein bar that blends different amino acid sources like rice protein, pea protein, or even hemp protein. The ingredients of one vegan protein bar that I definitely consider it to be a healthy option is as follows. A protein blend of sprouted whole grain brown rice protein and pea protein, a dark chocolate coating, dates, sorghum syrup, pumpkin seed butter, Sasha Inchi seeds, which are similar to chia or flax seeds, cocoa powder, sorghum crisps, which is a mix of sorghum, quinoa, rice, and tapioca to give a little bit of a crunch, dried coconut, and natural coconut flavor. Once again, as I read that off, you'll notice the absence of chemical preservatives and refined sugars in the ingredients list, and that particular brand is called Vega. Now, number five, and a final option, would be to simply make your own protein bar. And if you have a little bit of extra time on your hands, this is certainly a tasty option. One recipe that I'm very fond of are called cashew and bacon rice cakes, which are an invention of a sports physiologist named Alan Lim, who worked as director of sports science for the Radio Shack and Garmin professional cycling teams. The combination of bacon, cashews, and nut butter in these cakes is a great pre- and post-workout fuel, especially if you're doing something like a long bike ride, because you can actually take them along with you. Here's how to make them. You take two cups of pretty much any medium-grain sticky rice. You can get sticky rice at any grocery store. While that rice is cooking, you want to fry eight ounces of bacon until the bacon is crisp, and then you wrap the bacon in paper towels to remove the grease. Finally, you crumble the bacon. Now you drain the fat from that pan that you cooked the bacon in, and then you lightly beat three eggs in a small bowl, and you scramble them in that same pan over a medium heat. While those eggs are scrambling up in a large bowl, you combine the cooked rice and the bacon, and then you dump the eggs in there. Now you add in about a half cup of cashews, a quarter cup of nut butter, and a half cup of raisins. You mix all of this very well, and then you press it into a baking pan, about a nine-inch square baking pan that's around one and a half inches thick or so. Now, you don't actually bake it. You instead just toss it into the fridge, cool it thoroughly in the fridge, and then you cut into individual cakes, and you wrap them in parchment paper or aluminum foil and take out there with you for your workout. These bars are incredibly tasty. Trust me. As you can see, the options for healthy protein bars and what I personally choose to fuel my body with are far different from the -the run-of-the-mill packaged food you might find at the average health food store or gym. Of course, there are other brands in addition to what I've listed here that also do the job, but I just thought it'd be useful for you to see what I personally use. Now, for more information about protein, be sure to check out a couple other articles I'm going to link to in the show notes. One is called How Much Protein Should You Eat? written by my fellow quick and dirty tips expert, the nutrition diva. And the other is called What is the Best Protein Powder? which I wrote for my blog over at bengreenfieldfitness.com. Now, if you have more questions about how to choose the right protein bar or you've got a protein bar that you want to see if it passes my inspection, then join the Protein Bar Conversation over at facebook.com slash getfitguy. And until next time, this is the Get Fit Guy asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit.